An implementation of a VCA or voltage controlled attenuator is discussed in this circuit design example. These circuits, uh, being electronically gain controlling circuits, have a lot of applications, especially in audio signal processing, in which input voltage, input audio signal V in, is gain controlled electronically by this circuit to get to the output voltage V out. We want to see how this circuit is working this VCA circuit and we want to prove that the output voltage is related to input voltage in the form of two times input voltage divided by one plus EXP or e to the power minus V control divided by alpha plus one times the VT or thermal voltage in which the V control is the second input which is basically a control voltage as a negative voltage in this example that we apply to the circuit to control the gain or attenuation and alpha in the denominator of the formula is the coefficient of this resistor that I'm highlighting which uh, combined with another RA resistor they do a voltage division of the control voltage so that we control the voltage at the base of NP and BJT transistors in the circuit. Uh, this is an extended, extensive uh, conversation so in part A of this video I'm going to focus on um, the big picture of the circuit and the DC bias analysis of the circuit. Then in part two, next video, I'm gonna uh, now with the DC covered in part one, I'm, I am going to talk about the AC analysis of this circuit in terms of if the VN as an AC uh, signal, let's say, an, let's say an audio signal is applied, then how we get to this formula. So if you're comfortable with the overall scheme of this circuit and DC analysis, please uh, watch the second part and uh, after that the third part of this video in my analog channel and playlist okay so let's start with the overall scheme of the circuit it is implemented with uh, two operational amplifiers op amp one two at the input of the circuit and then final op amp op amp number three at the output uh, basically generating the output voltage v out for us I mentioned about the control voltage, which in this case is a negative vo control voltage. Uh, it is possible to design a variation of this circuit that works with a positive control voltage. I'll talk about it in part three, uh, but for now, let's focus on this one. All right, we have a total of six NPN bipolar junction transistors, uh, four of them forming two pairs of differential input or differential, uh, let's say, pair BJT uh, stages and then two more BJT NPN type transistors are actually connected to up amps as shown and they are basically driving the current needed for biosing of the differential stages. What is important in this design and required is these four NPN BJT transistors should be matched transistors. So these these four that I'm boxing them should come and should should be in the same package in a in a transistor array package that are matched. For example, MAT let's say 14 from analog devices that can be easily purchased from say Mauser or DigiKey is a very good choice for this purpose. So we need these to be matched transistors. There are other choices aside from MAT14, but MAT14 is one of the best, uh, let's say, solution for this match transistor purpose. Okay, so let's now go uh, and see what's happening DC-wise in this circuit. We have two 10 volt and minus 10 volt DC supplies in this uh, sch schematic, as you can see. So it's a dual supply design, and uh, let's focus on the negative 10 volt side. The one thing to notice is op amps are wired uh, to be in with the negative feedback. Uh, of course, we make the assumption that the positive 10 volt, negative 10 volt supply voltages are applied for both up for all the op amps in the circuits, and so they are properly biased. And also, negative feedback is there. For instance, just imagine uh, for a second that the pos voltage at positive input terminal is suddenly increasing for some unknown reason. If that happens, then output of the op-amp will naturally 
as a consequence as a, as a consequence of that will increase the voltage and that would increase the voltage of base emitter as if emitter follower it will increase the voltage of emitter of these of this npn transistor and that is connected to the negative terminal so see as voltage of emitter is increasing voltage of negative terminal is increasing basically as a result negative terminal voltage is following positive terminal voltage so I, all I'm trying to say is it is trying to compensate and catch up it's a negative feedback okay so with negative feedback op amp will be properly biased and in linear region of operation therefore op amp which is operating in linear region is benefiting from virtual short so op amp is not saturated and virtual short will guarantee that the voltage at positive terminal of op amp should be equal to the voltage at negative terminal of op amp in a steady state dc analysis so that is exactly what i needed i needed this for the dc analysis here here is why okay uh, consider these resistors so i'm going to start from the negative terminal of op amp one and i'm going to move across this resistor r and go through this wire and come back through resistor r to the positive terminal so effectively when i started traveling from negative to positive terminal what i noticed is something like this i noticed from negative terminal of op amp one there is a resistor r and i looped back to another resistor r and came back to positive terminal of op amp one we know that these two terminal have the same voltage so that is effectively i am saying the voltage here at this side of resistor is v volt and the voltage here is v volt as well and notice that there is no current that can go this way because that is going through input terminal of op amp number two which it has practically infinite impedance therefore no current is going that way so all i'm trying to in just fo focus on is the fact that these two let's say uh, these two resistors are in series and they are in series while on two side of them we have the same voltage so since there is the same voltage across the series of these two resistors there is no voltage drop across them meaning that there is no current through them dc current so dc current is zero amp when DC current is zero amp through this route, that means, so I'm gonna just write it here. So there is no, there is no current through this resistor, zero amp. And that means effectively as if this wire is cut DC wise. So it means the negative 10 volt is just doing a voltage division across R and R to the ground. So, all I'm trying to say is then negative 5 volt as a result will sit here. So we'll have negative 5 volt here. Half of negative 10 because R and R are equal. It is important to notice that the main resistor in this circuit is the R resistor, which is repeated in many places. It's important especially for these two R and also these two R and these four R resistors on top. We have... Uh, we go with let's say one percent uh, type resistor even better uh, th these are easily available resistor we're not talking about uh, via choice but it is important to notice that uh, minimizing the mismatch between resistors uh, would be helpful so we have negative five volt at this node and it's important to also notice that since there is no voltage drop across this resistor r this negative, ten, negative 5 not only appears at the positive terminal of op amp 1, but also appears at the positive terminal via this wire at positive terminal of op amp 2 as well. So I'm going to write negative 5. Then because of virtual short, op amp will enforce that that negative 5 appears at negative terminal as well. So we will have as a result negative 5 volt here half of negative 10 supply and also negative 5 volt here which means it appears as negative 5 volt 
at the emitter of this transistor as well. Uh, let's name these transistors right now. So we have T1, T2, T3, T4, and we have T5, and we have T6 here. So we are focusing on transistors T5 and T6 because they will be providing the DC current for um, the differential pair on top. Okay, so since on one side of this resistor R, we have negative 10 volt, and on the other side we have negative 5 volt, now it's easy to compute the DC current. So we have a total of plus minus, let's put it this way, we have a total of plus minus 5 volt across this resistor, so therefore the current that is going through this resistor, the DC current is simply 5, the 5 volt drop across the resistor, divide by the value of resistor. Okay, so that's the DC current. The same symmetrically goes with, I'm going to move this whole thing to here. So the same is applied to this resistor here. So we have plus minus 5 volt voltage drop across this resistor for the same reason. And we have 5 over R DC current. So 5 volt over R DC current that is going through this, this R resistor at the bottom. A potential choice for R could be on the order of, say, 20, 30 kilo ohm, for example. Okay, so we found the DC uh, current uh, that is passing through, because you know, just bear in mind that this current that we just computed, these currents can only go through the transistors, because the no current can come or go to, the, from, to or from the input terminal of op amp because as I said it has infinite impedance so all these currents that is shown should come from the uh, and should go through the collector emitter of transistor T6 and all this trans current that is shown should actually also come from the through the collector emitter of transistor T5 which as you can see is connected to the uh, common node shared between the emitters of T1 T2 in the differential pair first differential pair and for the other current that is uh, that is in the that is that is basically providing current for the right differential pair we have the current reaching or basically um, related to the negative the, the common terminal the common emitter for t3 and t4 now if the control voltage is zero just as a starting point then we have zero volt here because at the base of transistors T2 and T3 because that, let me put it this way, because as you can see VC, maybe I use a different color so that it's observable, this VC is just a voltage division across alpha RA and RA. So if we have, because it's important to make sure that the choice of RA 100 ohm as shown and alpha times RA, for example, alpha being 20, 30, 40, depending on what the design target is, the current of base of the DC current of the base of T3 and T2 would be super small compared with the actual current going through alpha RA and RA. So therefore, I can neglect the base DC currents that uh, let's say NP and BJT transistors base DC current will be on the order of sub microamp or microamp and therefore I can neglect that compared to say a hundred times larger current that is coming from VC and going through alpha R and R, RA. So these two resistors are in series therefore there is a simple voltage division for VC and when VC is zero obviously I get zero volt here at the base of T2 and T3 transistors. We have, by design, zero volt also at the base of T1 and at the base of T4 because resistor RA 100 ohm is very small and given the base current of transistor T1 being on the order of, say, microamp or even less micro, uh, current, then I can say the voltage drop across RA resistor, 100 ohm resistor, is so small that I can neglect it and just assume that zero volt ground is exactly at the 
base of transistor T1 and transistor T4. So we have a matching uh, transistor differential pair with zero volt at the base of two side, and therefore it's symmetric design. Half of the bias current, which we found 5 over R, will go through the collector of T2, so we will have roughly 5 over 2R going this way, and we will have 5 over 2R going uh, the other branch, so left and right branches. This is the same also applicable to the second differential uh, PJT pair, in which, again, when we have zero volt uh, for the base of the two transistors involved, there is mirror symmetry in the circuit given match transistors, so half BIOS current 5 over R will go through the collector of T4, so 5 over 2R going this way, and 5 over 2R going the other way. So what happens after this? Well, uh, we cannot neglect the current that is flowing outward through these wires. So we have these wires connected from the collector of, say, transistor T2, and as you can see, the wire is going to resistor R here. So I need to name this voltage here as V, let's say, uh, collector transistor 2, and I also have this node as V collector transistor 3. And let's make sure that this VC2 and VC3 is not uh, causing a confusion when we talk about VC. The VC at the input of the circuit, which is for now for a second assumed to be 0 volt as a reference baseline, is the control voltage. At, is a negative voltage that at most is 0. I mean, uh, from perspective of needing an attenuation, of course. I'm going to talk about the range for VC in, the fuse, in, in part 2 and 3. But uh, going back to VC2 and VC3, let's make a quick calculation to just find the DC bias voltage for VC2 and VC3. So let's for now focus on VC2. So for VC2, I'm going to write a KCL or Kirchhoff current law at the collector of trans BJT transistor T2. I have a current that is coming down from the 10 volt supply to resistor R, so this current basically. Uh, and the value of that is just uh, obviously 10 volt on one side of resistor minus VC2 on the other side of resistor divided by R. So 10 minus VC2 divided by R. I have 5 over 2R going through the collector emitter of T2. So that's one branch current out from the node. So see, there is this current that, com that, that is coming to the node. Uh, that current should be equal to the sum of outgoing currents. So one is this one, the other one is this one, which I can quickly compute because that's the same one that is going this way. And uh, it reaches this resistor R, which on one side has VC2 via that wire at positive terminal, which is then also enforced at negative terminal as well. So we, we know op amp being in uh, negative feedback mode, or let's say topology, will guarantee that the voltage of collector 3 and 2 DC wise will be the same. Okay, so this uh, current here that is going to go through resistor R here will be VC2 divided by resistor R. So I'm going to write it VC2 divided by R. Okay, so now we can write the KCL at collector. So KCL or Kirchhoff current law, law of preservation of current at collector of transistor of BJT transistor, let's say 2, T2, is indicating that the current that is coming in, 10 minus V collector 2 divided by R, is equal to the sum of outgoing currents, so 5 over 2R, plus the other current, which is VC2 over R. So the nice thing about this equation is these R's cancel out, and then if we compute this, we end up with the nice outcome that states uh, VC2 is equal to 15 
divide by 4, which is 3.75 volt. So that's the DC voltage, a steady state DC voltage of the collectors at collector of transistor BJT transistor T2 and the collector of BJT transistor T3 in the circuit. So I'm going to write it here, 3.75 volt. And of course, uh, we have the same situation here. So as, and, and, and all I'm trying to say is we can compute the current, right? I mean, this current, given that VC3 and VC2 match each other, so it will be the same situation. The current will be VC2 over R, which is 3.75 volt over R. And this current is going out, and when it go, uh, reaches the second, the third op amp here, it cannot go through the input terminal because input of the ideal op amp practical has practically infinite impedance, so zero amp here. The whole current has to go through this resistor R that is shown here. So as a result, we have a voltage drop across this resistor R, which is 3.75 times R, so it will be 3.75 volt. And since the collector is 3.75, then 3.75 minus 3.75 drop will result in output being zero volt DC wise, so DC. So as expected, the when there is when we are just doing the DC, uh, let's say a DC current voltage analysis the output DC voltage will be zero with the properly designed circuit that is symmetric and with matched transistors. This would be uh, the end of the DC analysis. Just to remind you that we are dealing with uh, small signal transistors that are matched and we are talking about the current gain of transistor HFE or beta, which is basically IC or the current of collector over current of base on the order of, say, greater than or equal to 100. So let's have that in mind for a future analysis that I'm going to refer to it. This will be the end of part one for this, uh, for this VCA or voltage control attenuator, and uh, which is a subcategory of the electronic gain control circuits. So, um, so the electronic gain control circuits, uh, there, there are other examples that I have posted earlier, but basically this is one a scheme that is nonlinear gain control, but it is uh, it has a lot of applications, especially in audio signal processing, where, where the electronic uh, adjustment of attenuation applied to audio signal is uh, useful. In part two of this uh, analysis and this VCA circuit or voltage control circuit, attenuator circuit, I am going to focus on the AC analysis. Basically, I'm going to, now that we know how the DC uh, is is applied in the circuit and over overall scheme of this operation, in part two, I am going to focus on V in voltage as a, let's say, audio signal. And uh, uh, of course, by that, I mean, as an example, that is working well for a bandwidth between 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz as expected for an audio signal, which should be fine for this uh, circuit. And I am going to show you and uh, discuss that um, the circuit will generate this output as a function of the VN. So that will be in part two. Um, so that is posted in the analog playlist in my channel. Thanks for watching. I hope that uh, this introduction part to this VCA circuit is interesting.